Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Julian Assange granted right to appeal extradition. Xiomara Castro condemns hijacking of Honduran Congress. Third journalist killed in Mexico in 2022. Rich countries increase uh, international recruitment of health workers. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has won the right to appeal his extradition in the Supreme Court. However, the UK High Court has denied his direct appeal. This means that the Supreme Court will ultimately decide if it wants to hear the challenge. In December 2021, the higher court overturned the lower court's ruling uh, which blocked Assange's extradition. The order had declared the extradition as oppressive on account of Assange's high risk of suicide. However, it was dismissed by the co High Court after so-called assurances by the US uh, regarding the conditions of Assange's uh, imprisonment. His defense team rejected these assurances, pointing to their conditional, unilateral and reversible nature. Assange is facing 18 charges, including seven counts under the Espionage Act. These are related to release of classified documents which exposed horrific abuses by the US military. If convicted, he could face up to 175 years in prison. After last month's ruling, Assange asked the uh, High Court to certify points of law uh, of uh, general public importance. His right to seek appeal was uh, granted based on one such point on January 24th. This could have a far-reaching impact and set a precedent for other extradition cases. Assange's team will now have 14 days to submit its application to the Supreme Court. Honduran President-elect Xiomara Castro has condemned attempts by right-wing forces to hijack the country's Congress. The crisis is centered around the leadership of legislature's board of directors. On January 21st, Castro announced her Liberty and Refoundation or Libre Party had expelled 18 lawmakers. This was uh, after these members opposed the candidacy of Louis Redondo as president of the board. Redondo's uh, appointment was part of an agreement between Libre and its coalition ally, the Salvador Party of Honduras. In response to the call by Castro, uh, hundreds of Libre supporters gathered outside the Congress building on Saturday night. A formal session to elect the board of directors was convened on 23rd January. The Libre coalition candidate Luis Redando was sworn in before uh, 48 legislators. The current crisis could also threaten the Libre coalition's position in Congress. The National Party has already offered to take in the 18th dissident lawmakers. In our next story, we go to Mexico, which has recorded the killings of three journalists in 2022 so far. Lourdes Maldonado was killed in the bordered city of uh, Tijuana in the evening of 23rd January. As per local reports, she was shot inside her car. Maldonado covered corruption and politics and had been previously targeted for her work. She was under the Baja California Protection Program for Journalists in two, uh, 2021. In 2019, Maldonado had approached pre uh, President López Obrador saying that she feared for her life. She asked for his help, support and for labour justice in the ongoing case. Jane Bonilla had uh, been uh, the candidate for governor from Obrador's uh, Morena party at the time. Just days before her death, uh, Maldonado announced on January 19 that she had uh, won the lawsuit. Her killing follows day after the murder of another journalist in Tijuana. Photographer uh, Mara Grito Martinez was shot and killed outside his home on January 17th. He covered crime and violence in the city and had also been placed under the state protection program. And finally, a nurse's body has uh, raised concerns about a growing move by rich countries to recruit medical staff from poorer regions. The International Council of Nurses has warned that this is further worsening staffing shortages in these areas. Absentee rates during the Omicron surge have reached a level not yet seen since 2020. This has uh, been driven by sickness, burnout and staff departures. ICN data shows that there was a global shortage of 6 million nurses even before the pandemic. 90% of these were concentrated in low and lower middle income countries. An estimated 1,80,000 health workers worldwide have also died due to COVID-19. 
The ICN says that it has witnessed a rise in recru recruitments uh, to the UK, the US, Germany and Canada. This is fueling global inequity uh, in pandemic response. It has argued that this scenario is similar to that of vaccines where rich countries have used their economic might to buy and hoard critical supplies. These countries have focused their recruitment efforts in sub-Saharan Africa and parts of the Caribbean. Nurses are often offered a higher salaries and a preferred immigration status. The ICN has uh, retaliated the need for a coordinated and collaborative global effort. This is also highlighted in the WHO's 2010 Global Code of Practice on International Recruitment. Wealthy countries are urged to recruit through bilateral agreements, which include health support for source countries. And that's all for today's episode. Uh, for more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.